In this video, we will discuss the limit theorems. So, limit theorems will help us find the limit of a function without having to draw the graph of the function or without having to make or construct a table of values. Alright, let's start with the first theorem. So, the first theorem is called the limit of a constant. If k is a constant, then the limit of k as x approaches c is equal to k. So, it doesn't matter what that c is. If k is a constant, then the limit is also k. For example, the limit of 5 as x approaches 10 is equal to 5. Now let's proceed with the second theorem, the limit of the identity. It says the limit of x as x approaches c is equal to c. Okay, let's have some examples. So, for example, the limit of x as x approaches 2 is equal to 2. The limit of x as x approaches 100 is equal to 100. And the limit of x as x approaches pi is equal to pi. The next theorem is about the constant multiple. So if you have a function that is multiplied by a constant and you are to find the limit of that, you can just take out the constant and then evaluate the limit of the function. For example, if the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to pi, evaluate the limit of 7 times f of x as x approaches c. So again, what we will do here is we will take the constant out and so that becomes 7 times the limit of f of x as x approaches c now since we know what the limit of f of x as x approaches c is so we can just plug that in so that's 7 times pi and so the final answer would be 7 pi now let's go to theorem number 4 it's called addition subtraction rule so if you have the limit of f of x plus or minus g of x as x approaches c that is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c plus or minus the limit of g of x as x approaches c in other words you can sort of break up the two functions and evaluate the separate limits. For example, if the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to 5, and the limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to negative 4, what is the limit of f of x plus g of x as x approaches c? Okay, we're going to apply the rule, and the rule is to add the separate limits of f of x and g of x. Now since we know the limit of f of x and g of x, we can plug that in. So we have 5 plus negative 4, and that gives us 1. So even though we don't know exactly what f and g are, because we know their limits, we can find or evaluate the limit of f of x plus g of x. So next one is uh, the multiplication rule. So if you have limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c, that is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c times 
the limit of g of x as x approaches so again just like with addition subtraction this is more of like like um, breaking up the the functions into separate limits for example if limit of f of x equals 5 as x approaches c and limit of g of x as x approaches c is equal to negative 4 what is the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches c so same thing apply the rule and then since we know the values of the limits we can plug them in and then solve so the limit is negative 20. theorem number six is about division so it's the same thing really for example if you have limit of f of x equals 5 as x approaches c and limit of g of x is equal to negative 4 as x approaches c what is the limit of f of x divided by g of x as x approaches c so again apply the rule and then since we know the individual limits we can plug them in and then solve so the limit will be negative 5 fourth and that's it the next rule is the power rule okay so this one works when you have exponents so the limit of f of x to the power of b as x approaches c is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches c to the power of b for example let limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to negative 7 evaluate the limit of f of x cubed as x approaches c so apply the rule okay and plug in the values because we know what the limit of f of x is so it's negative 7 plug that in and then solve so that's negative 343 okay this one's the last theorem it's called the radical root theorem so here's the statement the limit of the nth root of f of x as x approaches c is equal to the nth root of the limit of f of x as x approaches c so just like with the power rule we can put everything including the limit we can put everything inside the radical example let the limit of f of x equals negative 27 as x approaches c then the limit of the cube root of f of x as x approaches c is equal to the cube root of the limit of f of x as x approaches c now since we know the limit of f of x we can plug that in so that's the cube root of negative 27 and that gives us negative 3 and that's it so th these are the rules that we can apply these are the rules that we can use to find the limit of functions without having to draw a graph or to create table of values